Welcome in. I am Laura Bassett with From the Ground Up, and today we're doing an example design. So I have these cards in which I can mix and match different attributes, different constraints that you would likely see on a design project. I'm using the base image from a project that I've designed in the past, but of course, because I'm using these different um, constraints and, and uh, variables, it's going to be a very different design than what we designed for the client themselves. So this is a small front yard and uh, the, the client is single with kids, uh, I would say with two kids. The budget they have for the front yard is anything under 5,000. They would like all the plants to be California natives, drought tolerant, easy maintenance. Uh, their favorite colors are pink and green. Uh, they have some plant allergies. Uh, it's undefined what exactly those are. Uh, let's, for, for this example, say um, strong smelling things like jasmine. Uh, and they also have a fear of snakes. So they don't, they don't want their kids to get bitten by snakes. So with that kind of as our parameters for this design, uh, let's dive on in. So the first thing I do in any design is I go and I get the satellite image, the Google Earth image of the property. And then I start to define just some of the basic features, the house, the walkways, the road. And I do it in, a, in white because that's the easiest um, to kind of see overall. And it really allows for things to pop out. So now we're gonna to wanna to kind of look at the, the site, how the house interacts with the property. We're gonna to wanna to see in what ways, you know, what constraints we have, what opportunities we have. This is a really big, uh, busy corner property. So there are living room windows looking out, so we don't really wanna block that view. It's also important to note there's an old redwood stump in the front yard. There used to be this big redwood tree that was there. They had to cut it down because it was um, it was actually buckling the floor in the house and crushing the water pipes going in and out of the house. So they had to remove that, but the, the roots are still there. There's also a really uh, a decent slope from the house down to the edge of the, um, the sidewalk. So that's good to know. Uh, the path is kind of jogged in as many of these houses have been built that way. So maybe we want a path to the front door. However, you're going to see later on, I kind of nix that because any sort of hardscape is going to be a lot more expensive than planting. So it, with the budget we have set up on this project, it's not going to be easy to do that. So now we're going to be thinking, okay, so she likes pink, she likes green, she wants California natives. Um, so I'm just going to go through and I'm going to really quickly create a palette of plants for the, uh, the project. Just getting some ideas down. We don't have to stick with them. As you're going to see, actually, I switched out the Arctostaphylus emerald carpet. I was thinking of using this as a ground cover. I ended up using the shrub form of the manzanita as more of kind of a foundation planting. Uh, but just as a, as a good kind of structural plant, I really like manzanitas. They're a great native. They have a nice medium green. They have that really sculptural manzanita bark if they're the larger varieties. And um, they do really well in our climate. So then if we're going for pink native flowers, one of my favorite is yarrow. So Achillea mollis, uh, bees blossom or apple blossom. There's a couple different varieties that are really great with that pink color. So we're going to add that, the Achillea mollis. And then uh, I want something else. So I'm trying to think kind of low to tall is the way I'm thinking through the plant palette. So now I'm thinking, okay, we need something kind of small, contained. Uh, let's go with the Calamagrostis foliosa. This is a really beautiful small grass and it has this beautiful, these little kind of white seed heads that it gets that looks really nice. So uh, we're gonna use some Calamagrostis foliosa. It also goes really well with that kind of shape of the yarrow. So we're starting to get some similarities between. So then in thinking about kids, um, a big piece of any landscape that has kids or animals is a little piece of lawn. Uh, so in this one, we're going to go with the, the Carex Pennsylvania 
because that is a no mow variety. It's not uh, gonna take as much water because it is a native grass and it's really soft. And so it's nice to lay out on. It's nice to, to just be on. There's not a lot of space here. They're not gonna be playing sports out in the front yard. So this is just kind of a landing spot. You can put a blanket out, you can put chairs out, you can just walk across. Um, and then we're kind of getting into the more grassy. I would say this this design's going a little more on the side of grassiness. So another really lovely native grass is the deer grass. So the Mullenbergia ridgens. And uh, we're going to do like the pink cloud because that has this beautiful pink seed cloud in the fall. So again, we're sticking with the green, the pink, natives, things that are a little bit lower maintenance and uh, evergreen. So a big piece of any design is really making sure that there's a lot of plants that have that year round interest. The Mullenbergia is evergreen. The Carex is evergreen. I think the Calamagrostis dies back to the ground and so does the Yarrow. So those two will kind of, those will be dormant in the winter. So there will be some areas of kind of um, calmness in the winter, but there will always be some green. Uh, especially with the manzanitas and the Carrick's and the Mullenberg. Yeah. So out of this, it's like two thirds, one third is, um, is evergreen. And then, you know, that, that works really well so that even in the winter, it's going to look pretty darn good. So now that we have our plant palette, I'm just adding the colors. I'm just getting a rough idea what we got. So now we're going to kind of play with how this lays out on the site itself. So I'm adding in um, a new layer. I'm grabbing a color that's gonna show up really well against the satellite image. This is just me doodling in ideas, starting to feel out the space. Uh, and, and what I always suggest is just kind of draw, see what it feels like, see how, how the space is um, laying out. Just draw ideas out, don't get, too perfect at this point. It's just important to get things down on paper. Um, just starting to, to kind of think about ideas, what that might look like. I'm thinking, oh, you know, it might be nice to have something next to the driveway. Um, a lot of times we have clients ask for a driveway extension. Like they're like, oh, the driveway is too close. It's hard to get in and out of the car. In this case, the driveway is really big and uh, the clients never really had any issues there. So having something like a little row of plants next to the driveway gives a little bit of a transition between driveway and um, planter and then, you know, a pathway to the front door. So I turn all of that off because now I'm ready to get to a little bit nicer looking drawing. In my own personal process, I might do more of those sketches, but again, I'm familiar with this property. I'm familiar with the site, so I don't have to kind of go through as many iterations, but you'll see, I, I do change my mind on a couple of this. So I started laying out the Arctostaphylos and I realized that it wasn't quite the right size. So uh, these guys get about five feet in diameter. So we wanna give them space to grow in. This is kind of their mature size, roughly. This is diagrammatic, of course. So these would be right below the window level uh, near the house, but open underneath, you know, remember we don't want snakes. So you want to be able to see underneath the plants. So then I'm drawing in some of that Carrick's, uh, the no mo right next to the driveway. Cause that's just, it's a really beautiful green. And I think having something that's that you can walk on, but also just gives you some nice green right next to the driveway would look really good. So then I'm putting kind of the Calamagrostis foliosa in a little bit of a shape to kind of give some some structure. Uh, and then I'm putting in kind of our our faux lawn or our no mow lawn. And I'm like, okay, we want it, we want it back from the, the sidewalk a little bit. And you know, as as people, we naturally want to be kind of with our back to something looking out on the road. So because this is this is a corner lot, having it kind of tucked up against the Arctostaphylos, um, that will be really nice for the Nomo and it kind of connects down in to the path. So it's easy to walk from the house to the lawn, but it's disconnected from the sidewalk to the lawn. So there's a little bit of separation between the public space, which is the sidewalk and the private space, which is the lawn and the front yard. So now I'm kind of going back in with more diagrammatic, um, tools and I'm just, for the sake of this, I'm kind of showing my my thinking as I'm looking at this. I'm being critical to it. I like where the lawn is. So that's what you're seeing here. I really like where the lawn is. And um, then I'm, I'm kind of walking through and going, okay, so 
um, what what else what what about this works what doesn't work at this point I was kind of eh, you know like I was happy but I wasn't I really like the grass against the driveway um, and this is a thing where if you're in a larger firm, you're going to have feedback from other people, but it's also good just to get in the habit of separating kind of the work from your yourself so that you can look at it objectively and be like, eh, what am I not liking? Write it down, really get clear on what, what about the design you're liking and what you're not liking. Uh, so we're just going to kind of go through here. Uh, the, the, right off the bat, the thing that was kind of driving me a little bit nuts is the, um, the shape that I made with the calamagrostis that, mm, you know, doesn't not doing, not doing it for me. So, uh, now I'm doing like a quick little section to kind of show the, the height difference too, because it's always good to think about that. So here's me showing kind of the, the Arctostaphylos right up against the window it gets up to four to five feet tall with the grass, which is low. So we have a really big height difference there. And then I don't add in to this, but um, the Mullenbergia and the Achillea mollis, they both get um, two to three feet tall with the, the seed heads. So that actually gives a little bit of privacy from the road and a little bit of um, height difference, but not solid um hedge like so it's it's a permeable visually permeable very movable um kind of barrier so you can see i'm going in and i'm i'm erasing the things that i don't really like so i realized i don't really like the way the calamagrostis looked so i'm going to actually kind of reset i keep the the elements that i actually like and then um i just erase everything else out and we're going to kind of go back in and we're going to see if there's other shapes that we want to add in from an overall perspective. So I start drawing in a little bit of just kind of connect the dots or connect the shapes. Um, I'm drawing out some of the shapes here because this is an odd corner lot. We have this, this different, these different geometries between the roads, between the house and throwing in a little bit of a different angle so that we're actually using the corner as our, our kind of angle there and bringing that corner angle into the rest of the landscaping. I'm just blocking out some planting areas. So that Calamagrostis foliosa being short and, and low, right along that corner in a block, um, doing a couple triangles of the Achillea, then coming in with the, uh, oh, actually, I think that might be the Achillea. So the pink would be the Mullenberg, yeah, yeah. So just, and this is just kind of going through and thinking, right? Like how do these shapes lay out? How does that feel? Okay, well, we're not gonna end up having a path to the front door, so let's get that out of out of the way. Um, that's the center line. So the center line is kind of going through the middle of that corner with the um, sidewalk. And also when you're looking at this property, that's a that's a real key view because you're you're really looking at the property as you're driving by or walking by and that that angle of that corner comes into play. So we're adding a little bit of not exact symmetry, but a little bit more balance to the yard. And um, we didn't draw a card on what kind of quote unquote style, like whether the, the clients are a little bit tidier or messier or wild, or uh, we didn't really draw a card on that. So I'm going with a little bit more um, kind of a little more modern and contained in the plantings here, even though it is California natives. So we're not doing kind of a meadow planting where everything is interspersed. I just naturally went for a little bit more organized. I'm feeling like, especially on this corner lot, it's a small area. It's, you know, really small budget. So keeping things really simple, really easily organized, um, that's what we're going to want. So now let's talk a little bit about what I'm actually doing here. This is just my own process. So now that I've blocked out the color areas, I'm going in and I'm doing some rough diagrammatic line work. So I'm just blocking in 
kind of these planting um, swaths. So with the grass, I'm just outlining it just to get that feeling of kind of the foliage. The deer grass has this very, very thin, um, almost like wire-like foliage. So in there, it's going to be mostly the seed head. So the, the actual line weight here is just very sketchy, very, very open, nothing too dense. And then going into the um, Achillea, it kind of has that starfish shape, right? It has a it has fronds. The, the actual foliage looks a little more like fronds. So we're getting that just roughly in there. And this is how I start to get a sense of how much uh, how many plants are going in there. Now this kind of comes from practice and um, my own experience, but I've noticed that when I do take this into AutoCAD, I'm pretty close with the size of the plants to scale. That just comes from practice. That just comes from um, doing this enough that I have a sense of what, how many plants go into a space. Um, as you're learning, you may, you may take a little bit of time to figure this out. But the whole point is just starting to draw in where you think the plants are going to go. Again, this is a small budget. So even the amount of plants I'm putting in here, it might be reduced down just for budgetary purposes. And we'll talk a little bit about that later on when we do get into the AutoCAD side of things. So, but for right now, I'm just doing what seems right for me, what what looks good, and then um, then we can kind of go in and we can trim the fat. So I'm drawing out the little circles for the Calamagrostis foliosa because that's those little plants, little guys. These guys only stay about a foot, maybe eight inches wide. So so now we have the line weights, all right? So, well, we have a little bit of grass alongside the driveway. Um, and what I'm doing here, I'm keeping it really simple. This is a small space. We don't really want to overcomplicate it with a lot of different plants. We could um, if we had a kind of in, in our random cards, if the, the style was here was like cottage garden or meadow or wild, um, this could end up being very, 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 very complicated. So, but for this purpose, we're doing California native, we're doing low maintenance, we're doing, you know, single parent with kids. So we're, we're keeping it simple, but we want it to look beautiful. We want it to look nice, have those pops of color. Uh, the yarrow, that usually blooms from spring to fall. It has kind of different seasons when it looks really good. And then the grasses are really intense in the fall. So what you're seeing me do here is I'm adding in the mulch and I didn't really like the color. It was a little too bright and orange. So I toned it down a little bit, got that nice dark color for the mulch. And that actually gives us now a clean layer. So you can see Oh, okay. It seems like I'm doing things over and over and over, but that's, that's the whole point. So now I've taken, I'm happy with where everything is. Now I have the line weights and now I can start to do what I would call the more illustrative, the more kind of clean drawing. Um, you know, it's still a diagram. It's still not, um, precise looking, but this is more for, uh, this actual plan is more of a tool to discuss things with the client. So I'm starting to give the no mow grass a little bit of texture. When this goes in, it's it's very much like a pasture. It's a longer grass. It's It gets about eight inches long or so, and it's very wispy. So it lays down in these very beautiful shapes. So I'm just trying to give that impression, uh, but I'm not going to the exact, what is this? We're not going for photorealistic right now. Uh, when I was a younger designer, when I was first learning to do landscape architecture, I, I really wanted things to look photorealistic. And I spent a lot of time with markers and tracing paper and getting everything to look exactly right. And what I realized is that it looked really busy. Um, it was kind of plans are really meant as a tool to impart information the the accuracy is there when it comes to to scale drawings when you're installing but in a drawing like this you want to get the overall impression you want to be able to use it as a tool to describe the the idea what you're going with and not spend a lot of time on the photorealism at this stage because this is really uh, where we want the clients to give us their input and say oh yeah we love this we don't love this um 
So we're just going in really, really lightly. Again, that that deer grass, that Mullenbergia is very light and wiry. So we're adding in the foliage just really, really briefly there. And um, it's kind of a darker turquoise green. So in my designs, I try and pick different foliage colors so that even in the the winter and the evergreen, you have some interesting differences. So the Mullenbergia is a dark turquoise green. The um, Nomo is kind of a medium dark green. Uh, of course, the Calamacrostis is a lot lighter. It's kind of an olive green. It's a little bit, especially when it has the seed heads, it's a lot lighter. And then um, the, the Achillea has a silver foliage. And the Arctostaphylos, again, kind of has an olive medium green. So we've got light green, we've got dark green, we've got a little bit more of the warms, a little more of the cools. So just throughout, the foliage is interesting. Each plant kind of has its own place. Uh, and as much as possible, I try and get that spread of, um, of foliage if the bloom colors aren't. So if, say, we have a very, very busy color palette where we really want it to pop like silver foliage and red flowers. We wouldn't want to get as busy with red because red is the um, is the contrasting color to green. So maybe we just stick with silver instead of having all the other foliage. But what you're seeing is I'm just putting in really, really quickly, just putting in that Calamagrostis foliosa and putting the little seed heads, just kind of popping that color. Again, it's just, you're trying to get the overarching impression of what that's gonna be like, not the exact look of, you know, photorealism here. So we're just popping in kind of those two tones of greens. And this is where that plant palette we did earlier with some test examples of it helps a lot. And part of my process, just going back to when we were putting that plant palette together, is I have a huge folder with all these photographs of uh, plants that I've used in designs past and that I've taken myself. So I, when I'm trying to get ideas, I go through there and I'm just like, okay, what am I thinking? Because a lot of times, you know, and everybody's different. There's some people that have kind of their go-to lists. Some people have like a set palette. I try and be a little bit more flexible so that each project has different things, but there's different plants that I know do well or that I'm really comfortable with. So for example, you'll see yarrow in a lot of my designs just because it's a really great low maintenance, low water plant because it does get cut back to the ground in the winter. So any of the kind of wildness of it, um, it just goes back down to the ground and then it has such beautiful flowers, the butterflies, the bees love it. So you're going to see that I do put yarrow into a lot of designs. It also has a lot of different colors to it. So, you know, it has this, the terracotta is one that I put in my designs for years because it has kind of a yellow pinkish kind of, um, brick color to it. And it's a nice mix, which is really kind of unique in the landscape. Um, However, I don't put it on every single project. It's a more of a wild native. So it's not for those fastidious clients. It's not for uh, maybe a more formal garden. It's not for a more contemporary modern garden. It's, it's a little bit more for these situations where you want natives, where it's wild, um, where it's a little more prairie meadow style. So here I would say like our plant palette is a little more meadow and that might have been influenced by the clients that um that we did this project for originally and once we're done with the conceptual design here i will i will show what um the, the clients themselves actually did do once we're done with this whole project but for right now you're just seeing me go in i'm filling in the arctostaphylos and then i'm just putting a highlight on the shape just to give it a little more 3D nature because this is a big shrub, right? And then I'm going to go in with the shadows on the shadow side and I'm just picking a direction. I'm left-handed. So generally I pick the, the left side is the highlights and the right side is the shadows. Um, if you're being technical, the top of this drawing is north. So that should be the shadow side for us here in in the the Northern Hemisphere if you wanted to do that. So now I'm going to go in with a new layer and I'm just for both for the purposes of this example here and for um, showing the clients, it's really important to put 
people into your into your drawings. So there's this kind of design standard look of like a person from above. You can do this in all different ways. Um, this is just me being real quick and sketchy with it. I'm drawing in kind of what I would say is the adult, you know, um, into the drawing. So trying to get them kind of walking along one foot out in the front, one foot in the back, you know, with the, their arms probably would be the opposite way because anyway. So again, not being exactly perfect, but just giving the impression, okay, there's someone walking out from the house and they're walking out to the lawn. It just shows, okay, hey, look, you can, you can see they can walk out. Now I'm just dragging them around, mostly for the fun of explaining this to you guys. Uh, but I'm just walking them around and it's kind of fun. You can see like, all right, they can walk around through here. And I was thinking, oh, cool. Well, when I speed this up in time lapse, I can... Uh, I can move it along here and then be like, oh, we're going to turn. I'm also uh, teaching myself animation right now. So I was thinking this through is like, oh, this would be a nice animation. OK, now they're going to their car. OK, now I'm getting silly. I'm like, all right, we're, we're going to walk back to the house. Uh, OK, where's where's their final position? Where, where are they staying? OK, so that's a good spot because that's showing how the person is walking from the house to the lawn. Um, and then I'm going to add another layer and again, I'm thinking, okay, so they love pink and green. Maybe it's like um, their older daughter loves the color pink. So she's going to have this pink uh, picnic blanket out on the lawn. So again, try and think through how the client would use this. What, you know, what, what ties into what they like, what, what they're doing. Um, just add these little elements of kind of a nod to the client themselves. So this client loves pink. We're going with a bright pink picnic blanket, and then we're going to add a little person onto the picnic blanket, just laying, looking up at the clouds. Um, so we're just kind of roughly sketching out a little person laying down. We don't want to get too detailed in here. Cause again, this could be anybody. We don't, we don't want to be like, all right, we're going to do uh, spend five hours doing a perfect portrait of the client. Uh, although I did have a client in one of my photos I took of the site on a project where she was holding her dog. And so in one of the, the, the photographs that I, or one of the drawings I did, I actually sketched her and her dog into the drawing. She loved it. So, you know, people do, people do appreciate it, but it could kind of go either way. Sometimes, you know, you don't want to put that pressure on yourself of, uh, getting the client perfectly right. So I'm just kind of using the, the lines just to, etch in the figure, not nothing crazy, just to give a little like, okay, yeah, you know, there's the, like a little dress with leggings or something and they're looking up at the sky. Uh, and then I was like, okay, so we're saying kids, plural. So they have two kids. So we're, let's put like, maybe there's a younger brother is just sitting there looking at the grass. Again, how are they going to be using the space is really an important piece of information. How are they going to be using, using this? Okay. Well, that, maybe they're kneeling down, looking at the grass, looking at the bugs crawling around, um, just sitting down. Maybe they're, they're chatting with, with, uh, the parent that's coming out. You know, maybe dad's coming out to check on them, whatever. So they're kind of sitting there. We're getting some different, some interest in there. So this is a classic trick that um, landscape painters used back time in memoriam. Um, when there is a person in a landscape painting, it's more likely to sell. Uh, when there's a person in a landscape architecture drawing, it's more likely to really put the client in the space. Uh, we, we as people do not think about the landscape from this perspective. We're not birds. We're not looking down on landscapes like this. Uh, yeah, we use Google Maps. We, we know roughly what it's like, but this is not natural for us. So getting people in there both for scale so that the client can get a sense of the space. Like you can see that lawn is not, it's not a huge area, but it's big enough to have a little blanket. It's big enough to, you know, have a little, uh, a little beach ball. <laughs> Again, these are just, I'm just making the space look a little bit more lived in a little bit more alive here by adding these little fun elements. Um, and as you can see, just as a, a, a drawing thing, I've added different layers and I would say my layer management isn't the best, but I've added kind of the elements on top of the lawn as a separate layer from the parent. 
as a separate layer from the line work, as a separate layer from the coloring in, as a separate layer from the mulch. So this, this is helpful to have these different layers. So if say you wanna turn off the, you know, fluff of the kids and the blanket and the parent, you can. Um, if you need to go back in and you want to finesse the line work, you can do that if, you know, something like this or that. So now I'm going through and I'm cleaning up the document. So I'm turning off the, the satellite image. Um, I'm going to go back in and uh, put a little bit of line work into the palette. Normally, oh, <laughs> I had my I had my smooth the lines out tool turned on here in Sketch Sketchbook Pro, um, which does not work well. So I'm going back in and I'm I'm going. Oh, okay. We actually ended up doing instead of the Arctostaphylus emerald carpet, we ended up doing the Howard McMen. So. Um, just going back in, making some notes for myself. Normally, I don't have the legend like this for the clients, although it is, it definitely is helpful to have this because then they can kind of piece together what's what. Uh, but again, this is more of a discussion tool. This is not so much a standalone document for the clients. So that's kind of the overall design that we threw together based on um, the the parameters that we were given. We have single with kids. We've got under 5,000. We've got the California natives, pink and green. They have a plant allergy. In this case, we're going to say, um, you know, jasmine. And then they have a fear of snakes. So I'm going through and I'm thinking about, okay, what did we, what did we hit on the nose? Uh, obviously the clients are the clients. I don't know that this design is going to come in for 5,000 or under. So that's why I'm putting that little squiggly line. That's my, eee. uh, we definitely did the California natives. I think we hit that one on the head. The pink and green is, is awesome. Um, the plant allergy, I didn't define which one it was when I was doing the design. So if it's grass, it might not be a good idea. The, the snakes, um, snakes are a tricky thing. So I, I've had clients in the past that are afraid of snakes. And the biggest thing with snakes is you want open areas where you can see them, where they can't hide. So maybe the grass, uh, the plants being planted a little bit less dense, uh, that will help both for the budget and for um, not offering a lot of concealment for snakes. Really, honestly, they'll be wherever they want to be. There's, there's nothing you can do to specifically get rid of them completely. So I'm saying like, okay, the moly grass, we could plant that a little less dense. Um, the no mo grass, let's do that from seed. That's going to save us some money. Uh, the Arctostaphylus Howard McMinn, um, let's plant those a little bit smaller to, to save a bit of, of money. Um, because shrubs are shrubs are always going to be more expensive. Anything that's larger, that's slower growing, natives are just a little bit slower growing and um, a lot more expensive. So the Calamagrossus foliosa again, well spaced out, good for snakes. And uh, so this is just me going back through because even though it's the finished document, we want to make sure that we're hitting on all the things that the client wants. So when I go into an initial consultation with a client, I'm asking a lot of questions. What's your budget? What's your timeline? You know, does anybody in the family have any allergies? Um, what's your goals? What's your style? So I, I have a list, not as, as uh, finite as this one here, but just, I have a list with the, the things the client wants, the goals they want to get from the, the design. So going back after you're done with the concept and double checking that you actually hit those, those um, items is really important. So I'm marking down uh, Arbor Mulch because Arbor Mulch is one of our cheapest mulches here. So it's important to note things like that. I'm making decisions based on that. So that overall is our design here. And hopefully this going through this process um, has been kind of enlightening. We're going to be doing this as a series. So what I have done, I've put together a set of cards that has all these different variables on them, all the different types of clients you might run into, all the different types of budgets you might run into, all the different variables that we just went through. And I'm just mixing it up and I'm picking random ones. But before I do that, I pick a project site. Um, so this one was lucky <laughs> uh, that we actually had a small front yard for this, this budget size, because yeah, this is, this is a very tight budget um, in this day and age in the cost of living around here. Um, 
maybe in somewhere else that that budget could get you a lot more. But in in the Bay Area at this time of, of uh, you know, when we're recording this video, $5,000 is really not going to get you very far with a, a professionally installed landscape. If you're doing it yourself, maybe. Um, but yeah, it's it's kind of... That's a that's a small budget to to try and get um, a front yard done on. It's possible, but it's it's tricky. So anyway, that that overall is our beautiful native pink and green design. Let me know what you think. Let me know if there's anything that you would do differently on this one or any particular plants that you really like that would fit within that palette. And I look forward to our next design challenge. We will be taking this particular plan into its final iteration, we'll be putting it into AutoCAD. So that will be the part two. We're going to go into AutoCAD and uh, mock it up in there, and I'll showcase how we use uh, LandFX and AutoCAD to put everything to scale and do some of those final tweaks. Uh, we're also going to have a mock um, client meeting in which we're going to use some dice randomly to choose whether or not the clients are happy with the design that we put together. So we might have to do a little bit of a redesign. So we're going to try and simulate as closely as possible through, through random chance where it's like design D and D um, what their feedback is going to look like. So this, this might change depending on their feedback. So anyway, thank you for spending your time here and uh, look forward to seeing you in part two.